I don't have an internet, brother. What's happening? No internet, free will. There is how Hawaii. MashaAllah. Okay, come here. Oh, it's connected. How are they? It's what? That's good. Sakallah khair. Well done. I'm going to start, inshallah, even though the brothers are not turning up. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawalah. Tonight is the night of Asabt. In English, they call it the night of Al Jumu'ah. And it is the 28th night of Sha'ban, 1445. And the 8th of March, 2024. And we are in the second part of the Halu Salaf, people of the Salaf, how they used to spend the month of Ramadan. And we said the last time how the Prophet ﷺ and the companions did spend the month of Ramadan. But we would like to add some of the words of Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah when he describes for us in his book. I'm sorry about that. Tariq al-Hijratayn. Um, and he explains to us how he describes those who are al-muqarrabun. So in his book, he says, وَأَمَّا السَّابِقُونَ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ As for those who are predecessors, and they are muqarrabun, close. It means close to your Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah made them close because of thy righteousness, because of their ultimate obedience. خَلْفَ نَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ We seek refuge in Allah. We seek forgiveness in Allah. الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُمْ That there is no God worthy of worship except for him, awwalan. First of all, min wasfi halihim, from describing their status, wa adam al ittisafi bih. And at the same time, we are not having the same character. So he's seeking forgiveness in Allah to talk about those predecessors, the ones who are ultimate righteousness, from the companions and the one who followed, whether it's the followers and the followers of the followers. He said, I seek forgiveness in Allah, the one who's got no, no worthy, the one who's got, no, there's no God worthy of worship except for him. That is number one from describing their situation, the status and the characteristics, and yet we are not having the same. You know, when you describe somebody, you should be the same or almost the same or matching. He says, we can't. We did not even a smell for them, any a smell. That means this is an expression in Arabic. We did not see similar to these people. We did not smell somebody like him or like them. But verily, the love of these people makes it upon you, motivates you, encourages you to know their ranks and to know and to have knowledge about their status. وَإِنْ كَانَتِ النُّفُوسُ مُتَخَلِّفَةً مُنْقَطِعَةً عَنِ اللِّحَاقِ بِهِمْ Even though the souls of ours, our nafs, is behind and well behind these people and will never be able to catch up with these people. فَفِي مَعْرِفَةِ حَالِ الْقَوْمِ For verily, knowing the status of those people, فَوَائِدَ عَدْلَةً We have a number of benefits. So what are the benefits of the reap? just to know about these people, al-muqarrabun. 
And this is Imam Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah. He's saying, ma shamamna lahum ra. We didn't find somebody who's similar to them. And you know Ibn al-Qayyim how he was dedicated to his worship and dedicated to his knowledge, he's a scholar and a abid. Yet he says, we did not reach their rank. So he says from the, the, the benefits that you reap that the person who is always behind, uh, he is always muzriyan ala nafsi. And he, it's like criticizing himself. When you talk about these people, you start blaming yourself. Why you're not even close to them? Or matching their character. Man laha, la iman laha. Always reproaching himself. Always telling himself why, why you're not similar to these people. And of course, we are maybe matching the Salaf in abandoning. Meaning, in the Ramadan, you may leave your work. You may leave your habits. You may preoccupy yourself. So you, we, we leave lots of things. So we could match the Salaf in leaving. But in actions, it's impossible to match these Salaf. But knowing their status will make the person to reproach himself, criticize himself. And then another benefit he says, He's always having his heart like in need of Allah Azza wa Jal. His heart is uh, humble before the Almighty Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, ذليلاً, حقيراً, feeling himself insignificant once he knows about the status of those who are Salaf. So he will all the time be feeling that he is in need of Allah. And every time he will be truthful of Allah, asking Allah with sincerity. And he would, while he's studying their status, he would start to witness their ranks, yet he is amongst those who cannot catch up. And he sees the goods of the traders, yet he is in the company of those who've been deprived. You know, when the person is poor and he sees the goods in front of him, and this one is labeled to such and such person. This one is labeled to such and such person because they are rich people. So those are the goods which are not for him. So what happens to himself? He would have some sort of hasra. Like, you know, as a person who's got, what is hasra in English? Not regret. Grief, sorrow, grief and sorrow that he hasn't got the same, you know, this goods of these people. And now we're talking about materialistic things, the goods. And the goods, you know, in terms of merchandise wise, what are you going to have? In terms of profit wise, 10%, 20%, 30%, 50%, 100%. But we're not talking about merchandise of materialistics. Talking about the merchandise with Allah Azza wa Jal. Talking about, about your ibadah. Talking about hasanat. And those hasanat, they multiply in different ways. Ten times the minimum. That's for the normal person. As long as he's following the path of the companions, following the path of the Prophet, and also having sincerity. And ten times the minimum. Up to 700 times. 700 times. So the, 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 what you are multiplying is much more than multiplication of the normal materialistic merchandise. Then he says, And also, by studying their status, it makes, maybe, it will make him to be truthful in asking the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one in his hand, all the good that is to make him to catch up with these people and prepare him for such deeds like their deeds. So by studying their situation, their status and the biography, and you will be truthful to ask Allah, O oh Lord, 
You are the one in your hand, all the good. Oh Lord, make me to catch up with these people, to follow their path, and also prepare me to do the same deeds. قال فيصاب فساعة إجابة لا يسأل الله فيها شيئا إلا أعطاه. Then he maybe he would synchronize with an hour in which Allah will fulfill his supplication and whatever he asks, Allah will grant. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Al-Jum'atu itnata ashrata sa'a. Jum'ah is 12 hours. Fihi sa'a. In it there is an hour. La yusadifuha, la yuafiquha, la yajiduha. All of it, good narrations. La yajiduha, aw la yuafiquha. Abdun muslimun qaimun yusalli yas'al Allah shay'an illa wa a'tah. Ma lam yas'al harama. In this hour, which is in the Jumu'ah, that if you happen to be standing up in praying, asking the Almighty, subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be granted regardless, except if you ask for something which is sinful. فَالْتَمِسُوهَا آخِرَ سَاعَةٍ بَعْدَ الْعَصْرِ Seek that hour in the last hour of the Asr. So before the Maghrib, that hour is the one that you want to seek huh, and request from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can it be this hour is an hour of ibadah when we know that we're not supposed to pray after Asr? And we're not supposed to as well aim for the sun when it comes red? This is a, a question being asked to a companion called Abdullah ibn Salam. And he answered that question for us. This is based upon the narration of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. He was in At-Tur. He went to the Tur. Tur is a bit place far away from the Medina in which the Prophet وسلم, he said that one of the places that you want to be seeking shelter from the Dajjal is At-Tur. So he went to the Tur. But is it a correct journey to him as a religious journey? We will see. And he met there a person who is called Ka'b ibn Mata, Ka'b al Ahbar. And they started talking to each other. Prophet Huraira is telling him, What did you find in the Torah? Because he was a Jewish, he was a rabbi. And he said to him, What did you hear from the Prophet? So Abu Huraira, he said, I've heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that Sayyid al-Ayyam, the most eminent of the days, al-Jumu'ah, the best of the days is the day of the Jumu'ah. Khayru ma tala'at alayhi shams, the best of days upon which the sun had risen upon. Fihi, and then he said to mention the merits of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which he did. Fihi khuliqa Adam, Adam was created. On that day, also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him to enter paradise. On that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him to repent. On that day, he made him to land onto the earth. On that day, the hour will take place. On that day, the trumpet would sound. And there is not a single creature except that they are uh, sort of scared. Musikha. Musikha means like you know, you're about to hear something which is loud. What do you do? You're doing like this because there's a bomb is going to take place. What a single creature except would be doing like this from the fajr of the day of the Jumu'ah until the sunrise. Except for two people, two species, us, mankind, and the jinn. So the animals in each area between Fajr and sunrise, they're waiting. I'm not going to tell you to go and watch your cat. I'm not going to do like this. But this is what Allah told us. So he told us that they're waiting. If the sunrise comes, that means there's no direction. But whereas us, a human being, and the jinn as well, we have information that we know that the day of resurrection will not take place until the ten size comes in. One of them is a Dajjal. So we are, and also, sons of Adam, most of them, and also the jinn, they are away from the deen. 
They don't care about the hereafter. They don't prepare for the day of resurrection. Coming back. Then he said the Prophet, he said the Prophet وسلم, he said, وَبَرِلِ فِيهِ سَعَى In it there is an hour. If any person happens to be praying on that hour, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill his supplication except if he's asking for something haram. Kaab ibn Mata, he said, yes, this day happens to be in every day. So, uh, and it happens to be one, sorry, once a year. He said, no, the Prophet of Allah says every week. He looked back in the Torah and he said, yes, it is actually every week. So whatever is being said by the Prophet is already in the Torah which has been uh, manipulated. But yes, it is there every week. Then they left each other. He, Abu Huraira, met Abu Basra al Ghifari, companion. He said, Abu Huraira, where are you coming from? He said, I'm coming from the Tur. He said, if I've seen you before you went there, I would have told you not to go there. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ, he said, لا تعمل المطي إلا إلى ثلاثة مساجد. That you should not set up a journey, a designated religious journey by which you seek a reward, except to three masajid. Al-Masjid al-Haram, Al-Masjid the Prophet, and the Masjid al-Aqsa. He went all the way to the Tur, thinking that there will be a reward there, seeking that there is a Salah better there. It's not correct. So, and then he left. Then he met Abdullah ibn Salam. Abdullah ibn Salam, he was a Sahabi, but he was a Jewish rabbi, much knowledgeable than Ka'b ibn Umat. Ka'b ibn Umat is not a Sahabi. He was embraced Islam after the death of the Prophet in the time of Umar al-Khattab. Where Abdullah ibn Salam has got the well-known story with the Prophet So he said to him, Abu Huraira, I met Ka'b ibn Mata and we had this sort of dialogue with each other and I told him about the day of the Jumu'ah and he said to me, Verily, it's once a year. He said, he's wrong. He said, yes, yes, he looked back into the Torah and he found it every week. So he's emphasizing Abdullah ibn Salam that isn't in Torah exactly like the Prophet Allah says every week, the day of Jumu'ah. Then he said to him, Abdullah ibn Salam, and by Allah, I know which hour it is. Because he did not say the hadith of Abu Hurairah of where to seek this hour. Is it the beginning of the day, after the Jumu'ah, the last of the end of the day? So he said to him, Abu Hurairah, أَخْبِرْنِي وَلَا تَضِلَّ عَلَيْهِ Tell me, don't be stingy in your knowledge. I want to know. He said, it is the last hour before sunset. So Abu Hurairah, he said to him, but it's not a time for prayer. It is not the time for a prayer. The last hour, the Asr, it's not the time for the prayer. He said, verily, if you prayed your Asr and you waited for your Maghrib, you are in a prayer. And that's the solving of the matter. You prayed your Asr and you are waiting for your Maghrib, you are in a prayer, even if you're not praying. So that was the solution for this. Coming back. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us about this hour, which was today. After or before just the sunset, person asking anything from Allah. Simple question. Oh Lord, make me to be on the steps of those companions, the Salaf, the predecessors, the ones who are the best and the ultimate in the ibadah. Wallahi, if you have your truthfulness with your heart, humble before Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal will answer your call, especially if it is in that hour that we have mentioned. So after this, which is a, an introduction for what we're going to be saying, we say, Ya Ikhwani, there are, as I said last time, things which are authentic about the Salaf and things which are not authentic. Meaning, the sum of the ibadat was mentioned, which is not correct. And I mentioned last time, for example, that Uthman ibn Affan, he did two rak'ah and one rak'ah, he recited the whole of the Qur'an. So what did he do within the second rak'ah? If he had mentioned the whole of the Qur'an in one rak'ah. So you have to know that some of these hadith is not authentic. And it's not correct to say, well, the time at the time of those predecessors, this was having barakah. 
No ikhwan. It has barakah, but the hour, 60 minutes, is 60 minutes. And the day is 24 hours. There's no such thing. That 24 hours is going to extend in time-wise. Yes, it will have barakah. You will have more of a result into it. But to extend. So they say, Imam Ahmad used to pray 600 rakah every night. That's unbelievable, akhi. 600 rakah. That's a lot of time. So where is his obligatory? Where is his food? Where is his wife? And where is his teaching the knowledge? Where is, where is, where is that? So, hybrid? <laughs> so 600, Khwani, is not, it's not correct. And we can't really just justify something before we establish the truthfulness and the authenticity of it. But there are those companions who were like Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, radiyallahu anhuma, like Abu Darda, radiyallahu anhuma, they were striving in the ibadah. And they were doing their best according to the sunnah. But once they jumped and they stepped onto something that is, will displease the Prophet of Allah, then the prohibition will come to them, or the warning will come to them. Let's talk, for example, about Abu Darda. Abu Darda, Allah's messenger, had made him to be the brother of Salman al-Farisi when the immigration took place from Mecca to Medina. So he was his brother. It's like his blood brother, even who would inherit him. One day he comes and he sees the wife of Abu Darda. She's not looking after herself. She looks scruffy. What is happening, Ya Umm Darda? It's your brother. Complain, it's your brother. He's got nothing to do with the dunya. That means... Why should I beautify myself to him when he is not interested? Why is he not interested? Because of his what? Ibadah. He fasts the day and makes qiyam during the night. So when Abu Darda came to the house, he started making food to his brother Salman. Look how good he is. MashaAllah Abu Darda. And he said to Salman, eat. Because he's fasting. Voluntarily. So he said to him, I'm not going to eat until you eat. So now, Abu Darda is being compelled. He has to be to eat in order for his brother to eat. So he broke his fast. Then after they had eaten together, Salman went to go to bed. He prayed the Isha. And then Abu Darda stayed up to pray. So he said, I'm not going to sleep. Till you sleep. Sleep. So because of his brother, he slept. Abu Salman al-Farisi, just before the Fajr, the last day of the night, he woke up. And then he woke up, his brother, Abu Darda, his brother here is in, in Islam, not in blood. He said, now you pray. And then after the prayer, he said to him, Ya Abu Darda, O Abu Darda, inna li jismika alayka haqq. Your body has a right upon it, upon you. Meaning, don't huh, exert so much things about your bunny, then your bunny will be complaining. Don't humiliate your bunny and run it over. You sleeping, no sleeping, food, no food. Your body is going to be complaining. Inna li jismika alayka haqqa. You have to give your jism, your body is right. Wa inna li ahlika alayka haqqa. Your wife, she's got a right upon you. Wa inna li rabbika alayka haqqa. And your Lord has a right upon you. Give each his right. So it's not correct to give the Lord his rights on the expense of the rights of what? Of the ones whom Allah told you to look after. On the ones whom Allah compelled you to compulsory upon you to make sure they give them the rights. Then Abu Darda, radiallahu anhu, to confirm what his brother Salman al-Farasi is saying to him, he went to the Prophet So the Prophet وسلم, he said to him, Waymer, the word to, the, to, to a person like, Saying, you know, respect yourself, but not that much. So, very Atta' Salman, he's correct. He's correct, Salman. Follow him. He's right. That's the first companion. Second companion is Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, radiallahu anhuma, he was ascetic, zalid. And it was narrated to the Prophet, conveyed to him. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As is reading the Quran a lot. And he's all the time doing the prayer a lot. He's fasting a lot. Reciting the Quran a lot. So he called for him. 
He said, the best for you is to recite the Quran once a month. So once a month, Yaqwan, once. Even in the month of Ramadan. If you did once, Alhamdulillah, with understanding, very good. It's good to do it again. Make sure you understand it. He said, I'm, I've got strength. Oh, got strength. Then once every week. He said, I've got strength. That means I could read it even less than that. I said, I'm okay, every three days. He said, I've got strength. He said, there's no strength after this. Three days are the minimum. You will not understand it if you recited it in less than three days. As for his fast, he said, fast three days in the month. If you fast three days in the month, it's like you fasted the whole for the month. Because each hasana receives 10 time as a minimum. So one day receives 10 days, three days, 30 days. So he said, I've got strength. So the Prophet said, I've got strength. And in a way he said it, Prophet said it like he doesn't like what he's saying. He should have taken the advice of mine. Khalas, three days in a month. He said, okay, fast one day, break two days. He said, I've got strength. strength. Fast a day, break the following day. He said, I've got strength. He said, no. Best of the fast is the fast of Dawood. So beyond fast of Dawood is no good. Yet the Prophet of Allah, he did not fast the fast of Dawood. Ali he was able to do so. Okay, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was not. Finishing the whole of the Quran every three days, even though the Quran was revealed unto him. And that's why the Prophet of Allah said, Take from the ibadah what you are able to do, what you are able to achieve. Allah does not get bored of you making ibadah to him. It's you who's going to get bored, not Allah Azza wa Jal. In the deen, mateen, this deen is strong. Go into it in ease. Don't jump so deep. And then you're going to be what? Regretting. Take it in ease. Don't make ibana which is not going to be good for you. And you're gonna, not going to keep up with it. And maybe you lead the whole of the ibana. Allah ibn Amr al-As, when he took upon his shoulder, that every three days going to finish the Quran. And then he fasts the day, break the following day. Upon the companion, this is like it has to be all the time. He couldn't continue. He got old. His body couldn't take it. So he started to regret. Oh, I wish I have listened to the Prophet ﷺ. Because his ibadah couldn't keep up with it. He would have listened to the Prophet ﷺ. So the ibadah, ikhwani, is like a, a table which has a number of types of food. It's got kebab, it's got her. Huh? It's got hummus. Got, some people like the kebab. They don't like hummus. Some people like kebab and hummus. Some people like, you know, tomatoes. Some people like chicken curry. Huh? It's like a feast. So this ibadah, like a hajj, charity, fasting. Or, so each person takes what he likes. I'm not talking about the pillars. I'm talking about the extra ibadah that you do. So some people, you see them, mashallah, into the charity. They're very good, giving money. Some others, even they got the money, but they're not really striving that they read the Quran all the time. Some of them, they will, mashallah, make a fast a day, then pray the following day. Some of them, mashallah, they do the night prayers. So each one has got different. Okay? Now, you see, nobody, nobody, even the Prophet, who's the best, can do each of these ibadah to the ultimate. Do you understand me? Fast to the ultimate. Prayer to the ultimate. Charity to the ultimate. It's impossible. Even the Prophet Sallam, who is the best of the people, he didn't do it. Prophet of Allah did not do the Umrah in Ramadan. Where he said the Umrah in Ramadan is the best. He did not do the most of the fast after Ramadan in the month of Muharram. He did not. He did it in Sha'ban. Prophet of Allah, he did not fast the fast of Dawood. And he said the best of the fast is fast of Dawood. Prophet of Allah, he said, so he sat the Quran maximum of every three days, but he did not do that every three days. Yet he's able to do that. But he did not do that. To show you. And the Prophet ﷺ always telling us to keep up that ibadah as long as it is continued. Continuity, continuity is the most important thing. Prophet ﷺ said, 
وَدَاوَمَ عَلَيْهِ الْحَقِّ Best of the actions and the deeds and the ibadah is even if it is little, but as long as it what? Continues. You don't leave it. That's better than too much ibadah and then you stop. Too much wuthir and then you stop. If you keep just that minimum wuthir, you all the time do it, it's better. Hayrun. And that's why Aisha, she was asked. Regarding the ibadah of the Prophet ﷺ, she said, كانت عبادته ديمة. He used to worship Allah continuously. So when he takes a ibadah, he will continue. That's why the companions took that from the Prophet of Allah. So if he is doing a fasting of the day, like in the following day, he has to keep it all the way. If it's recite Quran every three days, he has to keep it all the way. Continuity. That's the best of the ibadah, ikhwan. But the ibadah, which will be in carrying on to you something which is wrong, like one day the Prophet of Allah, he goes into a place in the masjid where the women, they pray the prayer, and he saw a rope tied up from one pillar to another. Rope. So he asked, who's this? And he said, this is your wife Zainab. When she does her qiyam and she gets tired, she holds on to it to keep awake. To keep standing up. Prophet ﷺ, he said, Hello, untie it. It's not correct. Tie and tie it. Let the person pray in his time of his strength, in the time of his weakness. Because he might pray and then he's so tired. And then instead of invoking forgiveness, he will be insulting himself. He's so tired. Oh Lord, help me, kill me. Because he doesn't know what he's saying. Help me and kill me. Because he doesn't know what he's saying. So that's why. So they said, no. Hello. I'm tired. It's not correct. Take from the ibadah what is it? Anya ikhwani. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, the one we said how much his ibadah, and he kept it as much as he can, fasting a day, breaking the following day, every three days, he finished the Quran, the night qiyam, masha'Allah. Yeah. He did not have the glad tidings then another companion whom we don't know his name, that he will be in paradise. Yes. This hadith narrated for us, Anas radiallahu And it's Muslim Imam Ahmad. And our Shaykh al-Albani makes it to the hadith. Anas radiallahu anhu said, one day with the Prophet suddenly he suddenly said, يَطْلُوا عَلَيْكُمُ الْآنَ رَجُلٌ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ The person from the people of Jannah is going to come out. We're waiting now. We thought it's going to be Abu Bakr, be Umar, senior companions. None of those. He said, a man came out. Even Anas doesn't know his name. Where his beard is dripping water. And he had his sandals or shoes hooked underneath his arm. Nothing special about him. But Allah's messenger gave him the guarantee that he's from the people of paradise. Second day, he said the same statement. And the same person came out. Third day, saying the same statement, he said it, and the same person came out. That's when Abdullah ibn Abd al-As, he decided to follow him. Why? Because he wants to be like him. So he went and followed that person, and he knocked on his door, and he said to him, Verily, I have made an oath not to speak to my father. He wished to give me shelter for three nights. So he accepted. All of that just to see what he's doing. And he spent the three nights with him. He didn't find him doing any ibadah. No except for the obligatory. No qiyam layl. Nothing. What is he doing in this person? Nothing. So with his intention, what is in his heart, he had reached the rank of those who are sa'im qa'im. Taking the paradise as a guarantee. After the three days is finished, and Abdullah ibn Amr al-As is now narrating this hadith and Anas is conveying it from him. فَحَدَّثَنَا عَبْدُ اللَّهِ What happened? He said, وَكِدْتُ أَنْ أَحْتَقِرَ عَمَلِ I thought, what he's doing is nothing. وَكِدْتُ أَسْتَصْغِرَ عَمَلِ What is he doing? That's a kathir amal. So I said to him, يَا هَذَا Oh, my dear brother, I did not have a dispute with my father. I made all that up. Just to see what... What is your ibadah? Because I've heard the Prophet Allah saying three times that you are from the people of paradise. What is that that distinguishes you? That made the Prophet of Allah 
to say that you are in paradise three times. He said, well, whatever you see, it's only that. So he's about to leave. When he's about to leave the man, he said, oh, but there is something, it could be that, that I do not find in my heart any ghish, meaning conning to any Muslim. Nothing there. I don't have any grudge towards any Muslim. And also, I will never envy a brother regarding good that Allah had given him. A good wife, a good car, a good house, a good... Uh, I will never envy him. He said, this is the one that got you that place. And this is the one that we cannot do. That's Abdullah ibn Amr al He said, we cannot do it. Very hard. Control yourself and train him. As soon as he's something good, in the hands of your brother, first word comes out of your mouth, Allahumma barik. Allahumma zid wa barik. Give him more. Give him barakah in that. So imagine yourself, you're coming with this brother all the time, and he's got a very old bicycle. That's what he's got. Following day, you see him with a, a Bugatti, huh? a car which is worth about half a million or more. What's going to happen to you? Are you going to say, Allahumma barik? MashaAllah, Allahumma give you not even another one. MashaAllah, Allahumma barik. Or are you going to say, ah, where did he get it? Must be drug. Huh? Drug. The person is working in drugs. That's why. So this person with his heart clean, he got that place of a person who is doing that ibadah. Khwani, the month of Ramadan, it's going to be either on al ithnayn or al Monday or Tuesday. So it could be that the day after tomorrow, that the first night of Taraweeh, which is the night precedes Monday. It could be. Definitely there will be Taraweeh and the night preceding Tuesday. Definitely. But it could be starting from tomorrow. Not tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. Today is just tomorrow. So tonight is the 28th. Tomorrow is the 28th. The Ahad, Sunday is 29th. That's when we start sighting. Sighting for the crescent of the Ramadan. If, what a, well, the people are going to sight it, it's going to be maybe at our Dhuhr to Asr time. We're going to have the news. Between Dhuhr until Asr, just a bit Asr, to about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, we'll definitely know whether it is Monday, it's going to be the first day, or it's going to be the 30th of Sha'ban. So the day of Monday, we call it the doubt day. Yamushak. Why is it doubt? It could be Ramadan, it could be Sha'ban. And we're not allowed to fast that day unless it is a habitual fast. That means you fast on Monday and Thursday all the time and no problem to fast Monday because it happens to be your fast. Or you have an obligatory fast which is a missed day from previous Ramadan or you have vow okay, or expiation of an oath. If it's obligatory fast, no problem to fast that day. But to fast it because of out of precaution. It could be Ramadan, it could be Shaban. I'm not going to indulge into this fight. I'm going to just fast it. That's not allowed. Sharia, I came to distinguish between Sha'ban and Ramadan. All the ibadah has to be singled out. So Ramadan has to be singled out. It cannot be just joined to Sha'ban. Then another person comes the following year, I'm going to make a precaution of two days. So he makes it Ramadan instead of 30 days, 32 days. And so on and so forth. And they end up with, going, we'll fast Sha'ban and Ramadan. Yeah, khalas. There's no moon sighting. No. So moon yeti. We have to do that. So the Muslims incumbent upon them to go and sight for the crescent with their own eyes. Yes, they could use the help of binoculars, but if the binoculars can see it and the eyes cannot see it, there will be no moon. We have to see it with Aid al Mujarrad, with our eyes. Not with sending as well from the earth. We're not going to send jet fighters or, uh, or helicopters or whatever planes to see it from above there. Okay, we have to see it from the earthly vision. But as I said, those telescopes to make it closer, to look at it properly, to make sure that it's a crescent, not the UFO. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, oh, well, that's not a problem. Um, then, inshallah, we have to have a program through which 
we do our timetable for the ibadah. Twenty, it's not correct to start, you know, uh, these quiz programs, I've seen them. They would prepare the people, subhanAllah, on social media. Every night there's a quiz. We used to have musabakat Ramadan. Every night there's a question. So at the end of the month, you have all these answers. And then you send it, and then you're going to win a prize. This is not really our job to go and have quiz of Ramadan, all of this. Our job is to make sure that we invest in our time to do as much as ibadah as what you can from the Quran, from the sadaqat, from the dhikr of Allah, from the night qiyam, and if we can, to go to Umrah, inshallah, in the month of Ramadan if you're able. Now we're going to come to add, actually as well, to the class, some of the fiqh regarding the days of Ramadan. 20, for the niyyah is important. Two pillars for the siyam. The pillar number one is the niyyah. Pillar number two, which is a condition if you wish, that is to abstain from all the fast breakers. The intention this intention has also some conditions. Condition number one for the intention is to be decisive. So it's not, maybe I'll fast tomorrow, maybe not. If you say that, you're not going to be having that day counted. It has to be, you must fast that day. So the intention is decisive. And the intention has to be as well for the month of Ramadan. It's not just going to fast. No. The fasting is obliged to Ramadan. It's not going to just fast. No, no, I'm just going to fast. No, it's for the month of Ramadan. Second. Thirdly, uh, the person, when he as well makes the intention, is not to utter a words. No, it is his heart confirming what he's doing. So he knows what he is doing. So that is the intention for the person, is that he knows what he's, in what he's doing. Uh, fourthly, the intention has to be done between sunset and fajr. You cannot do the intention dhuhr time unless it is a voluntary fast. But obligatory fast like Ramadan, you have to have intention after sunset. No fasting for the person who does not have the intention. In the night, in the night here between sunset and sun uh, and in fajr, dawn. So you have to have that intention. If you are breaking your fast in the sunset, have the intention to fast what the following day. And if you are doing your sahur, that's an intention by itself because nobody, nobody, nobody normally wake up two o'clock to have a meal unless he's going to be fasting. Is the intention to be done every night? Yes, every night every night and more emphasis if you have broken the fast due to traveling due to illness and you want to renew the fast you have to have the intention so every night you know that tomorrow i'm going to be fasting that's your intention second one is to abstain from the fast breakers the fast breakers are two types materialistic and spiritual the materialistic is the one that you abstain, but the consequences is to fast from the spiritual. So the materialistic that you fast from is in order to train you to fast from the what? From the spiritual. What is the spiritual? That is to fast from lying, to abstain from the indecency, to abstain from the sins and haram. That's the spiritual one. For well, the Prophet of Allah, he said, if you implement or if you say shahada al zur falsehood and implement it if you don't leave that then Allah has got no need for you to go and abstain from food and drink so you have to keep away from all of that even all your life you have to keep all of that but more emphasis with your fasting as for the materialistic breakers which everybody knows and we're going to count them again those are the ones are follows some of them ittirari and some of them, ikhtiyari. Those breakers are divided into two categories. One, which you have no power in them. And one, it's under your power. It's within your capability. The one was you're not in your power. Two things. 
and that is Haidu and Nafas, menses and postnatal, and that is for the women. So the woman, she's fasting all day, just before Maghrib, some blood came out, or menses, her day is in, violated, it's been invalid. She was on her menses, and she wanted to fast, but her blood did not stop until after Fajr. She cannot fast that day, and those things that are not in their hands. So it's called Al-Mufattirat al As for the Mufattirat, which is al And by the way, Aidu al-Nafas, all of that consensus in the Quran with Sunnah. We have no difference among the scholars. As for the Mufattirat, which is under your control, number one, food. Number two, drink. Number three, is jima', which is into cause. Number four, is the deliberate vomit. Number five, is the drip, which is injection intended for feeding the person. Uh, so we mentioned now here, and then also the decisive intention to break your fast, and also the person committed apostasy, and also the hijama, and also, and this is controversial, and also the ejaculation, and others also can controversial. So let's just talk to them quickly. We said food and drink. Food and drink, ya ikhwani, is consensus of Quran and Sunnah. This food and the drink, whether the food is beneficial or it's not. So whether you're eating a piece of paper or you've eaten normal food, that will make you fast. The drink whether it is water, juice, or fuel, or even poison, make you fast. The food and the drink, the ones that come from the normal hole, which is the mouth, added to it the nose. Why do we add the nose? Because the Prophet of Allah, he said, exaggerate in putting water in your nostrils, except if you're fasting. So we know that the nostril leads to the stomach. You know, there are people that can have, if they are ill, they can put the pipe on their nose and feed them from the nose. Do you know that? Okay, so the, the mouth or the nose. So any food or drink comes from other than that, except for the drip, which is an injection, goes into the blood, and intended for the person to keep him on support. And he could say for months without food and drink because of the drip. But nobody would eat, for example, from his eyes or put some milk into his ears and drink from his ears. So there's no problem for the person to put eardrop, eye drop. Doesn't really break his fast. Third one, we said al-jima'ah. Intercourse. Intercourse will break the fast. If the person is, had broken his fast in Ramadan and fasting is compulsory upon him, he's not a traveler, he's not ill, then he will have more penalty than the normal day. Because he will have al-kaffar al mughallada heavy. So when you break your fast for the food and the drink, you are sinful. See, you are sinful. And you have to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you have to make voluntary fast in order to compensate for that day. Whereas the kafar al mughallada if you've intercourse, on top of that, you have to fast the day instead of that day. And also on top of that, you have to free a slave. Well, you haven't got a slave to free. Then you have to fast 60 days. Oh, can I opt out to the last option, which is feeding 64 people? No. Unless you're not able to free the slave, and then you're not able to fast 60 days, and that is two months consecutively. Two months. It could be 59 days, 58 days, depending on how long is the month. 29 days or 30 days. So, this is called the kafar al mughallada al jimaa which is penetration, intercourse. Whether ejaculation took place or not, you have violated your fast and you have incurred the heavy penalty. And that's where the consensus, and it's in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, the drip. The drip is like the food and the drink, and it's controversial. Some scholars, they said, it doesn't break the fast. Some, they said, it did. 
But I would say somebody who's in a situation where he's in need of the drip, if you don't fast, you are ill. You need food now. So do not, you know, fast. So because you are in a situation, you are ill. When we're coming off of the ill the drip, we come to the vomit. And the vomit here, most of the scholars say, if it's deliberate, because the hadith of the Prophet then it will break the fast. If it's not deliberate, if we're overwhelmed, overcome, overpowered by the the, the vomit, it does not break the fast. So if you put your hands in your mouth and you started vomiting, then you have deliberately broken your fast by deliberate vomit. And that is, you could find it in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Then after that, we said, the decisive intention to break your fast. So a person said in the middle of the day or the end of the day before the sun said, I, I can't tan, I can't hunt, I'm going to break my fast. And decisive. That intention will break his fast. He had decisive. But he was not decisive. Like, I will, I will break my fast if I find food. That's not decisive. I will break my fast if I find some food in the kitchen. But if he said, I will break my fast whether I find food or not, that means he broke his fast. He's decisive. Just like a person in his prayer, while he's praying. He said, I'm not going to pray. I'm going to finish the prayer. That intention of his violates his prayer, his intention. Second one, which is a lot, uh, the other one, is the person who's committed apostasy during the month of Ramadan, during the day he was fasting. He left Islam. Then after half an hour, somebody convinced him to go back to Islam. That day is violated. That day is not compensated. The days before, still there. But the one that he's committed apostasy in the middle of it, it's not going to be counted. Then we come to the ones which are controversial. Very controversial. One which is the hijab. Popping. Abdullah ibn Abbas, he says, breaking of the fast is something going in, not coming out. Because you can take your blood out. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did hijama at the end of his days. Yes, he said, the person who makes hijama and the person who has hijama done to him, both are having their fast broken. But this hadith is abrogated. Because the Prophet at the end, he had made hijama while he was fasting. The last one, which is a controversial, is ejaculation. Here, ejaculation means deliberate ejaculation. It's not, for example, a person kissed his wife, and then upon this kiss, then ejaculation took place. No. We're talking about this person is deliberately want to ejaculate. So deliberately is hugging and embracing and doing everything in order to ejaculate. That's the one which is controversial. Most of the scholars, they say he's broken his fast. And some, they say he did not. Looking at the proofs, there's no strong proof to say that ejaculation breaks the fast. But remember, Ikhwan, if you start rotating around the area, which is the area that is into cause, you might into cause and then you'll be in trouble. So that's why the Prophet ﷺ, when he had a man coming to him, oh, messenger of Allah, am I okay to go and kiss? Yes, go ahead. After a while, another person came, but he's young. Messenger of Allah, can I kiss? He said, no. Companions were clever next to the Prophet of Allah. said, messenger of Allah, yes or no, the same question. See, that old man is able to control himself. Was that young man, he will not. Now, would we say, the Prophet said to him, no, that's not on the, fa- any, on the understanding it is haram to kiss his wife. But the Prophet was giving him guidelines. Because you are youth. You might follow on from this kiss to something else. And then the intercourse takes place. And then you'll be regretting. But you know that young and old, this is to do with the age. But some people who are old, but mashallah, powerful in the lust. And some people are young and are very cold. So this depends upon the person. So if this person is controlling himself, regardless whether he kisses or he even embraces, or even he, even his wife, got no clothes. 
long as there's no intercourse takes place, it's halal. Person came to Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, Ya ibn Abbas, oh ibn Abbas, I married my cousin in the month of Ramadan. And he's asking him Ramadan now. Am I able to kiss my wife? He said, do you hold yourself? Hold yourself from what? From the intercourse. Not from the lust. The lust is there. There's no such thing when you kiss your wife, lust off, lust on. No, it doesn't work like that. There's a lust. But from the intercourse. He said, yes. And kiss. But he wants more. He said, well, what about if I... Mubashara means it means both. It could be intercourse, but it could mean here like embracing, but no close. He said, Do you hold yourself? He said, Yes, then Bashar. That's Mubashara. But he wants more. And he said, Sacrifice my father. He's like, he's like enticing him, you know. Ibn Abbas, is it? Am I allowed to go and put my hands on her private part? Do you hold yourself? He said, Idrib. Don't put it. No problem. So it's all of it. Do you control yourself? Do you control yourself? Do you control yourself? You know that Aisha, عنها, when she had kissed the wife وسلم, and he kissed her in Ramadan, she's still young. Rabbullah, when he died, he was only 18 years old. She's young. So her lust is powerful. And she said, Kana yubashir wa Kana yuqabbil wa he used to make mubashara in front of her. And he used to make as well mubashara. He, put, he will cover her private part and he does whatever he likes. And who is amongst you can control himself? That means it's going to be hard to control yourself because as I said, you might do the intercourse and then you will be regretting. This person came to me. I remember. He said, I've done it. The what? He said, I have intercourse with my wife. I said, why did you do that? He said, well, we started with the kiss. And we ended up intercourse. I said, how many poor people can I feel? He said, no, you have to fast 60 days. Are you sure? Yes. 60 days you have to fast. Two months. He didn't fast about two months anyway. But he now, he's putting like alert. Don't approach my wife. <laughs> Don't approach uh, warning, uh, subhanAllah. This is the now the breakers of the fast materialistically. Okay, so if you remember them, inshallah, it's very easy. Very easy. I'm going to repeat them again and focus. Food and drink and intercourse in the drip. And then we put the one which is ittirari, we call the menses and also the postnatal. And also the liver vomit. And also a person have got decisive intention to break his fast. And also a person committed apostasy. And then the last two, hijama and ejaculation. Eleven breakers of the fast. Nine of them break. Two do not break. Which one does not break? Ejaculation, which we believe it doesn't break. And also the hijama does not break. These breakers of the fast, which are under your choice, will not break the fast until the four conditions are fulfilled. One, you are knowledgeable. Two, you are remembering. Three, you are deliberate. Four, you have the choice. Knowledgeable, that means you are not ignorant. Ignorant here is of two types. Ignorance of the time and ignorance of the rule person who had broken his fast, thinking the time it was, for example, sunset, but it wasn't. He was looking at the sun. The sun was hiding behind the clouds and he thought it was sunset. And he had eaten like it had happened the time of the Prophet of Allah. Asma, she said, we have eaten, broken our fast on a cloudy day. The sun had appeared. The Prophet of Allah did not command them to redo that day. A person could do that. For example, in the Fajr, he wakes up and he looks at the clock, he sees it's 2 o'clock in the morning, he says, it's still time for Sahur, he eats. And then he wakes up properly and he sees that the clock is actually upside down. It was 5 o'clock, not 2 o'clock. Do you understand know I me? Mean? It wasn't 2, it was 5. I mean, he's well up to Fajr, but still his fast is okay because he didn't know. The ignorance also, the ignorance of knowledge. If this person who had eaten a piece of paper, and he swallowed it, and then somebody said to me, Akhi, you've broken your fast. Why? It's a piece of paper. I did not eat food. I said, well, this is food. He didn't know that. 
that doesn't break his fast. So the ignorance in the knowledge, ignorance in the time, it will not make this fasting breaker to be a breaker. Number two, remembrance. If you forgot, you've had food, you didn't know that you're fasting. No problem. Okay, so you had a cup of water and you drank, you drank to the last drop. You remember I'm fasting. You said that might as well, the last drop. If you drink that, drank that last drop, you are about to drop in the fast. If you stopped before that last drop, once you remember, okay, no problem. Thirdly, deliverance. If the person made a mistake, no problem. Now let's say, for example, a brother is helping a brother. Remember those cars before? And when the person runs out of petrol, person, another person will grab a pipe and put it in the tank and they start sucking in order what, to bring the diesel out or the petrol out. So this person, he put that diesel in his mouth, he sucked, mm, he swallowed some. Doesn't break his fast because he's not mistaken. A person is making wudu, putting the water in his mouth. Mm, somehow somebody spoke to him something mm, and then he drank it. Okay, his mistake, no problem. So deliverance, it has to be. So if you did not deliberate, no problem. Finally, choice. If you've been forced under the gun to eat, then it doesn't break the fast. Because you save your life and eat. Because that is not being under your choice. Wallahu ta'ala. A'lam by which alhamdulillah finished both. And I'm sorry that it did not have any break. The break is now. And after that, only question and answer. Is that okay? Jazakumullah khair. Subhanakallah. Bihamdik. Ashadullah. Bissafi. Wa kutubi. Thank you.
did it not work from the beginning when I was told? And there was no problem. But it's your problem, it's your, your instrument. Okay? Your system. You don't want to check on the uh, recording. You understand? Check on the recording. The recording speaks for itself. And what says, okay, I will see. Was it continuously stopping? <laughs> Something with your computer. I like it. Something with you. Uh, Faisal, you're back. You have anything that stops now? Yes, I am. Check that. That's your problem. Sort yourself out. If this is coming, come out. Fire is coming out. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومولا. Now the session for the action, the questions, and I think I've taken a, a long session without me realizing. Um, so uh, we will start with the questions straight away, and we have maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes for the questions. Have any questions, please, regarding most importantly Shaban Ramadan, things to do with that. If you haven't got anything to do with Shaban Ramadan, they will go maybe Rajab and. Muharram. Anything that you'd like to ask, inshallah, please go ahead. Just ask one of us. Faddal, start with him. If they see what? No, 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 no. The, the moment they know more than you, my dear brother. So, okay, the men says when it starts, it starts with the flowing of the blood. Any pain precedes that, it doesn't make it count as a breaking of the fast. It has to be the blood. If blood come out, then the menses came out. But pain, sometimes the pain comes before the blood by hours, even half a day, maybe a day. But still she's not on her menses until she sees the blood. Okay? Zakallah khair. Uh, okay, Ahmed Sharif, by the way, you are, your microphone is on, Ahmed. Faddal. Yeah. Right, so a person who is in the middle of nowhere, and I can't find where is the middle of nowhere, because these days you are in the middle of somewhere. Meaning, wherever you are, you are connected to the people. So let's say that you have seen the crescent. La, clear, and mashallah, it's a crescent. So tomorrow for you is Ramadan, not the 30th of Shema. So for you, exactly, you've seen it on Monday night, which is the, mon the night precedes Monday. That Monday is the first of Ramadan. And you had some communication with your family, with the people who are concerned about this and you say to them I could see the moon and well we didn't have any official declaring of that the moon has been sighted do I go by my sightseeing or I go by the community you go by the community imagine that it was the moon for the Eid are you going to be coming to the masjid in Rome saying Allahu Akbar and everybody's doing fasting Ramadan while you're doing what your Eid You've seen the moon of the Eid. No. So the Prophet of Allah, he said, Sawmukum yawma tasumun. Fadhaakum yawma tudhoon. And you, you fast when you, all of you fast. Udhiya, when every makes udhiya. So the, 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 the community has to be together regarding this issue. Even I've seen it in our own eyes. And here, Aisha radiallahu anha, she had Masruq, was well known, Tabi'i, follower. And uh, they, she said, let's give him some, you know, honor him with some uh, food and everything. He said, well, what prevents me that I'm not going to eat because I believe maybe it could be the day of Arafah today instead of the Eid al-Adha. 
and I'll praise the ninth, the eighth, I'll praise the tenth. She said, never mind what you believe. The community, us, we said, all of us, that is to, today is the Eid al-Abha. So there is no such thing that you would think it is the day of Arafah, the day, and the Eid is the following day. So it has to be the community. But if you were in the middle of nowhere, and you were seeing the moon, and you had no communication to other people to verify that they're going to be fasting tomorrow, or it's going to be the 30th of Sha'ban, then in that case you fast. Because you have nobody. And you had your communication. And you are the person seeing the moon. And you must fast the following day. But now, you fasted the following day. And then you had some sort of connection. Your whatever, your phone worked, or somebody gave you a charge, or whatever. And you had connection. And they told you, no, we did not sight the moon. Community decided that today is the 30th of Sha'ban. You must break your fast. Because the fast with the fast of the brothers, the people. Okay? The fast of the fast of the people. Now, and let's say that you have fasted until you finished, and then you had communication after sunset. And they told you, by the way, no, that was the 30th of Sha'ban. I've seen the moon. Well, they did not consider your sighting. So that day will not be counted from Ramadan. It has to be with us, with the people. Now, Tobin. So you're asking me that you are on a firm or a company or something that you have so many non-Muslims and you are having some Muslims as well and you're making some sort of food during the iftar and you are inviting the non-Muslims while they're working there to join in their fasting. So what's the question? No problem to ask the non-Muslim to fast, but you know that the Muslim is non-fasting is not going to be counted. But this is a, a way of da'wah to tell him that's the fast. And the, the, the importance of it is not actually the health part of it. Oh, that's going to be healthy. No, it's the spiritual part of it. We're fasting because Allah Azza wa commanded us to fast. But we know at the end of the day the fast is beneficial for us. No problem. No problem. To invite them to fast. And to tell them and to tell them what this is the fast and all that. And then in the iftar you tell them about the deen. No, I said fasting a day, breaking the following day is the fast of Dawood. Christian, he fasts Monday and Thursday. Is it is it fast like our fast from the sunset to the Oh that's not fast. <laughs> the fast of the Christian is not a fast. It drinks water, so it's not fasting. And by the way, they don't fast like us from the dawn to the sunset. They don't. They they even maybe go a bit more than the sunset till the night when the stars appear. Twenty four hours, but with water. <laughs> yeah. That's not fast. This is their fast. That's why we have a difference between their fast and our fast. Is the eat, uh, the food of the what? The pre-dawn meal. Faslun ma bayna siyami ahl kitab. Wa siyamina aklatu sahar. Pre-dawn meal. Distinguishes us from them. We have sahar. Sahur. Sihbini. Don't lose it, ikhwan. Sheikh Labani says to eat compulsory. Yes. Because the Prophet ﷺ said that. He said, Tasahharu. And he said, don't leave it. And he said, it's a symbol between us and them to distinguish us from the fast, from the fast of the people of the book. And he said, it's the Ghidha al-Mubarak. He said, Ghidha al-Mubarak means the food which is blessed. And he said that the angels invoke forgiveness for those people who make sahur. So lots of things. Don't use Even with just drink of water. Like this. Drink water, that's it. Sahur. Don't leave it. The more you eat, it's better because you'll have more power to endure the day. 
but it just a biscuit like this. Mashallah. Some people that you know they don't have the appetite. But you didn't really in you know you didn't really uh, learn how enjoyable if you start eating wallahi the sahur. Proper sahur. One day I was invited with some friends who are Jordanian in Saudi Arabia. This person invited me and his wife and my wife and all that. We went there. My wife went to the women and we went to the men. And we thought the sahur, you know, is going to be like, for example, a bit of egg or whatever. And it was barbecue chicken, barbecue kebab. And it's everything. And it's full. So my friend, he said, my stomach is not really used to digest something food like this at this time. But when we started to eat, and we liked the food, Believe me, the following day, the fast was a joke for me. Do you understand me? It was a joke for me. It means like I didn't feel it. I didn't have concrete in my belly. Proper, solid food. So it's true. Wallah, you need a lot. Allah, you don't feel anything. But if you are, you didn't have anything, you'll be starting hungry. Stomach will start. Oh, what is food? I want food. Nah. Faddal, yeah, doctor. Now, questions like that. Come on. I don't understand the question properly. Um, first of all, this person who had lent this trader money, is it lending, lending, or investing? Investment, Investment not lending. So when you invest the money, in turn, it's different from lending. To invest the money, there is no zakah on it, because you invested it. It's going to be going you know, up, it could go down, could lose, your business can be liquidated. So, you understand me? So, the money is being invested. It could be turned into cars, it could be turned into houses, whatever the project is. There's no zakah on that. So, once she receives the money and she saves the money for another year, then she'll pay zakah. <coughs> There's investment. There's a loan different. Nah. Fadal. Which one of the two you can invest? Invest in crypto. Is it halal, haram? Allahu Akbar. I'll keep away from it. What you invested in? Now this crypto, is it what? Savings? Or you invested it as a business? It goes up and down. What is it? I mean, I, I, by the way, crypto, despite I've read about it, I can't understand it. Do you understand me? I cannot understand it. Is it savings? So I, let's say I put thousand pounds. Am I thinking I'm a, I could take my thousand pounds the following day? No, no, but what what do you do? What does this thousand pound does it do? What does it do? How, how can it be an investment and then you could get your money capital? You don't lose? If you're buying currency with currency, it's haram. Currency with a currency, it's haram. If I invest in dollars and start buying dollars, it's haram with a pound. Not correct. If it is the case, no, because it's the, the, this is Yaqwadi, because you're not dealing with gold with gold, you're dealing with papers. Papers and digital has nothing to do with actual gold. Prophet said, gold for gold, tit for tat. Okay, so this one is, you know, papers are different. It's 
like trading, I'm trading into currency. I'm making sarraf. I'm making sarraf. It's not correct. It's not really, it's not right to do investment in that one. If it is the case. And that's why some of the scholars says haram. Now, I don't know how to, but that's the, I can't really answer that question. I don't know how, you know, it works. So if the person is having this money saved, and it's like saving dollars. So dollars can go up and down. Pounds can go up and down. Then you have to pay zakat. So saving. Now. Zakat on the one. So, so, so you, you, you're having the money or you're having the house? I don't understand the question. If you're trying to build the house, the house, okay. Is it Zakat money? Is it Zakat money? Zakat money has to go for him. Maybe he doesn't want to build a house. He wants to buy petty liquid. It's up to him. He has money. <laughs> he wants to invest in petty liquid. You give him the money, Akhi. The guy cannot delay it. It's his money. It's not your money. Now. To me, the question, I don't understand that word. Is it, is it permissible for a family to decorate the house with the kids in Ramadan? In Ramadan. No problem, inshallah. But not to put things which are not allowed. To remind them of the Ramadan, no problem, inshallah. But please not really to put things which are not correct, like this crescent. This crescent doesn't present Ramadan. The crescent was the entire, this is the flag of Turkey anyway. <laughs> Nothing to do with her. Yeah, huh? yeah, that's what I'm just saying. It's imitating the kuffar. It's not correct. But for the, to encourage the children and, you know, for that, no problem. <laughs> Allahu A'lam. So if you are imitating the kuffar, it's not allowed. Yeah, but I mean, what, where is this coming from? That's the question. Is it coming from, borrowed from those people that create for the Christmas? But we know that, you know, in the Eid, we tolerate things and we do the same. Uh, and they say for the kids, not for everybody, for the kids. I have seen that some people, they put Ramadan Mubarak. Word, no problem, put Ramadan Mubarak. That's the problem, that's the problem. No, 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 I'm just saying you can't imitate. You cannot just imitate this is because we have this, we have that. But I'm just saying, no problem to put your house, say Ramadan Mubarak. But he said something, we decorate the houses like the people decorate their Christmas. That's very, uh, that's the one which is not right. No. Wallahu a'lam. You look, Shajaratul Hila. The tree of the crescent. The Christmas tree, they have the tree of the crescent. We have the jingles as well, the bells as well, the bells and the <laughs> the bells and the crescent. Now, any other questions, Okay, uh, yeah, Faisal, Fadl. Somebody who is poor and he cannot pay the fidya. Because an old person or, ya, or or chronically ill. Is that what you say? Or oh, she's, a, oh, she's a breastfeeding woman and cannot pay the fidya. Well, the Prophet ﷺ, he had a person like this who couldn't pay the fidya because he had intercourse. Okay? Um, and uh, he waited. So he went to the Prophet of Allah and he said to him, I, I, you know, I'm, the, I'm, I'm a poor person. I can't pay the fidya. As for fasting two months, I can't. He's had intercourse with his wife in the month of Ramadan. He came to the Prophet ﷺ, said, Messenger of Allah, I've done it. Free a slave. 
I don't own anybody. Fast 60 days. Messenger of Allah, I'm not able to fast for 30 days. I'm going to fast for 60 days. It's impossible. Then feed 60 poor people. Wallah, messenger between the two mountains of Medina, La Bataiha, two lavas. There is nobody poorer than me. He made, a, he made an oath, even though he does not work with the socials, you know. <laughs> he doesn't know if he's a poor or the, the poorest or not. But he thought he's the poorest. He said, wait. Prophet he had helped him with the, you know, with the sadaqat of other people, gave it to him, and he said, give to the poor people, including yourself. Because he's poor as well. So if he can't have anything, nobody's helping him, he's got nothing to do. Nothing on him. So I mean, the question, Khwani, Faddal ya doctor, online. How do we know that al Qadr? Well, we could strive to know when is that al Qadr. Is that every time you find finish the night, the morning you uh, we say tahari, to see if it is that al Qadr. First of all, the night is pleasant, so it's not a night of chaos or fitna. Number two, the night in terms of weather-wise, it is the best of all the nights preceding or before it. So it's not really cold, not hot compared to the nights. Before or after, the best of the nights. Uh, number three, the sun on the following day will come out or rises without rays. Okay, feeble, weak, just like a brass, sorry, a brass dish. Okay, brass dish. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. Do we reply what? Do we reply to both Adhan or the Juma? The Juma is supposed to be one Adhan, not two Adhan. The first Adhan was in, done by Uthman, but not this way. It was about an hour before the second Adhan. Just to tell the people in the market, get ready. But this one, which is about five minutes in between, the first Adhan definitely is not from the Sunnah. And you do not repeat with the first Adhan, but you repeat with the second Adhan. And if you want to repeat with the first Adhan, don't even show it in your mouth. Because you don't want to encourage people to believe that this Adhan is correct. Then we use perfume with alcohol with it. Well, alcohol, first of all, let's just say that the best of opinion regarding alcohol is pure. It is pure, not impure. For the thing is the alcohol is forbidden from a different angle which is the Prophet of Allah did not prohibit the alcohol just for the drink. No, even to carry it or even to, 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 uh, to, to uh, carry it to somebody else or even to juice it or even to sell it or even to buy it. Um, we're not supposed to be next to the alcohol. So the alcohol is nothing to do with whether it is impure or not. It is pure. But because... We're not allowed to carry anything with alcohol, even though we're not going to drink it. That's why Oh Sheikh al Rahimahullah says it's not allowed to uh, have perfume with alcohol. Al alcohol here, we're talking about the ethanol, not the methanol. Because ethanol, methanol, do two different things. Ethanol is the alcohol, methanol is a poisonous stuff. And that is no problem to have. Because you have it in most detergent and cleaning stuff and all that methanol. So if that in the perfume is methanol, no problem. But the ethanol, no. We can't have it even though we're not going to, we're going to use it for external uses. We're not going to drink it. We're not allowed to take it. Use. So try to avoid it. Which is very, very hard. Now. For what? No, there's no adhkar for the baby children. Adhkar is for you. The child, unless he goes up and start to learn to speak, then you could teach them. But to make adhkar on him, to read on his behalf, you don't need to do that. But you could make him ruqya. You put his hand on his head. Yes. That Allah will protect him from all the evil eyes. So you do that for the children. Husband and wife, been married for a long time, do not have any children, any advice. Well, 
first of all, no problem. I mean, I mean, before we go to the medication, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah azza wa jal grant you the children. And also follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ that gives you barakah and power. Like going to Mecca, making dua there, like drinking zamzam. That will give you as well power, zamzam water. And do not let the other side down, which is the side of medication. I don't know what, what was the reason. Is it to do with lack of semens, lack of live uh, Siemens, or is it to do with not enough? And then, then there is these days, you know, ways of increasing that and enhancing this. Do not go to the uh, tube child. What do you call them? These tube child, what are they? Test tube child. Yeah. Don't don't go for that. Unless this is you are the doctor and your wife is the one that having problem, because what sh showing the private part to somebody unnecessarily is not correct. Is not necessary. Um, these days we don't know how this test tube could be mixed up with other things. You know, Allah what are you going to put from it? You know, so as I said, if it's a husband and a wife, yes. Um, I know for a person he had stayed for eight years, eight years, no children. I know him, he's a friend of mine. And he went to Kaaba and he drank water, Zamzam, he did his work. Then I met him later on because I left him. He was in this country. I left him. Then I came back. He's got eight children. MashaAllah. Eight years, no children. And then I had what? Eight children. MashaAllah. Boys and girls. Suddenly, khalas, everything opened for him. How? Allah Azza knows. Don't give up. Don't give up. No. Any other questions, Ikhwani? Yala Shammam, a last question. Say that question again, please. So, so she gives birth before Ramadan. She's got postnatal straight away. Yes. She, she has to make up the fall of Ramadan before the following Ramadan according to her ability. So, so if her ability was, she's trying her best, but she couldn't because of this and this. And remember, the excuse, this is a point very, just remind me to say, a very important point. It's a principle. The excuse of delaying, making up the fast, for the missed fast, so the excuse of delaying to make up for the missed fast is more expandable, more wider, more flexible, should say, than the excuse of breaking the day. Do you understand me? So if you were to break the day, you don't have that much excuse. But for postponing making up for that day, it's, you got more. So for example, I was busy. I had lots of guests. So no problem too, because the Aisha and her, and the wives of the Prophet them, they used to make up for the days, but sometimes they can't make it until the following Shaban. Why? Because they are busy for the Prophet of Allah. Matt, from journey to a journey, from delegate to the delegate, from the guest to the guest. They are the wife of the president, the wife of the Prophet. Okay, so they, they had excuses which made them to what? To postpone. So those excuses are more flexible. It's not to be a, really a very serious excuse, but there is an excuse I could postpone. So if she couldn't do it within the year until after Ramadan, no problem. Wallahu ta'ala, a'lamu subhanaka Allah bihamdik. Ashadu la ilaha astaghfiruka wa atubu I hope that it was really audible.